In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we've got a wonderful gospel story. Uh, Jesus, um, the, the disciples had been fishing. Jesus got into one of the boats, pushed out a bit, and was teaching people from the shore. And then he said to Simon Peter, um, um, put the, push out into the deep and cast your nets over the side. And Peter's response was, this is a, a fisherman talking to a carpenter, but Lord, we were out all night, we didn't catch anything. And we're not going to catch anything during the day, this is not the time for fishing. But because you've said it, I will do it. And he did it. And they put the nets down, and couldn't believe it, this massive amount of fish in his nets, and uh, had to call the other boat to come and help us with uh, James and John on board. And they were all absolutely amazed at what had happened. And, Pe and Paul, Peter's response was, Lord, I'm a sinner. Depart from me. And uh, he, he couldn't cope with it. So what happened here was uh, that Jesus performed a physical miracle, first of all, by somehow or other. God had put, I mean, Jesus is the creator. A miracle is something when God intervenes in what he set up to do whatever he wants. And he can do it. And he did it in this case. He organized for the fish to be there and they were, they were caught. So he organized, first of all, a physical miracle to get St. Peter's attention. And God does this with us sometimes. If I asked, and they're different for everybody, if I asked everybody now to share how God got their attention, I bet we'd have just as many stories as we have people in here this morning. But God, he does something that gets our attention. For Peter, it was this massive catch of fish under the instructions of the carpenter. It was amazing. It just amazed him. And, and uh, James and John as well. But then, he did that physical miracle to bring about a spiritual miracle. And the spiritual miracle was what happened in Simon Peter's life and in his heart. It changed him. And he was able to see that Jesus was just not a carpenter, just not a prophet from Nazareth, but he was somebody very, very special. And he was worth following. So when Jesus said to him, um, from now on, you're going to be catching, you won't be catching fish, you're going to be catching men from now on, uh, follow me. We're told that they left everything and followed him. So it was preparing St. Peter's heart and James and John's to follow Jesus. And it's a wonderful story. And as I said, God has done that in our own lives, otherwise we wouldn't be here this morning. Somehow or other, he's got our attention, and we've said, yes, I want to follow you, Lord, and we're following him. Um, <clears throat> now, I've, I've headed this, um, this sermon, uh, God doesn't have uh, an HR manager. <laughs> With apologies to HR managers. <laughs> God doesn't have an HR manager. Why do I say that? Well, what was the contract that he gave to, James, to St. Peter, James, and John? Uh, this was the contract. If you're on the line, you can see, you're probably wondering, probably wondering what's on there. Well, there's nothing on there. <laughs> because when Jesus calls us, he doesn't spell out what's going to happen. He just says, follow me. And we have to trust him. And that's quite scary at times, but that's what it's all about. Um, so, St. Peter, none of them had any idea, idea what was going to happen. So, St. Peter, we know, he, he was around uh, Jerusalem and uh, Caesarea and so on for a while. And then when the persecution started, he went up to um, uh, Antioch. And then he went across the north of the Mediterranean and he ended up in Rome. And Nero, when there was a, a fire, blamed it on the Christians and he uh, killed a lot of Christians, including St. Paul. Um, St. Peter, sorry, St. Peter. And um, uh, St. Peter was, uh, said he was not worthy to be crucified in the same way that Jesus had, so he asked to be crucified upside down. That wasn't, that wasn't on the contract. <laughs> St. James. St. James... James and John were brothers. St. James was the first apostle to be martyred. That wasn't on the contract. 
St. John, he, uh, when he was in Rome, um, he was actually uh, the, uh, 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 one, of the, one of the saints, one of the uh, early church fathers records it. He was thrown into a, a vat of boiling, wo- boiling oil to kill him. And he jumped out totally refreshed, <laughs> which amazed everybody, including himself. And then because of that, the emperor banished him to the island of Patmos, where he wrote the book of Revelation. So he was willing to be martyred, but he, he wasn't actually, he was the only one that wasn't martyred. That wasn't on the contract, boiling oil and uh, exile in Patmos. So it's a bit scary when we um, say, yes, I'll follow you, Lord, because we don't know what's going on. When I chose to follow, I was brought up as a Christian in a Christian family, and I thank God for that. Um, but I, uh, then in my late teens, I kind of thought, I think I can manage life without God, just for a short while. It didn't take long to God, for God to get to help me to realize that I needed God in my life. And so when I recommitted my life to God in the late, in the late teens, I, I didn't get a contract. I had no idea that I would end up serving in two armies, that I would end up coming to Australia, that I would end up serving in two churches, that I would start a church, uh, this, uh, this parish here, an Orthodox church. I had no idea. That wasn't in the contract. But you know what? It's been a wonderful adventure. It's been a wonderful adventure. It was an adventure for Kuria Janet too. When she married me, we, uh, I wasn't a priest, even in the Anglican church. She had no idea I was going to be an Orthodox priest. So it's been a, a, a great uh, journey and an adventure. But none of that was in the contract. And when Christ asks us to follow him, all he asks is, follow me, trust me. It's exciting. You know, on last Sunday, I had no idea I'd be preaching this Sunday because it was on Monday that the bishop said, Father Nicholas, you're going to go to St. Paul's next weekend. And you go, oh, no, because you know, he was preaching today. <laughs> so I had to, get, I had to do another sermon. Um, but that's, that's the way it is. That wasn't on the contract either. But that's part of the deal. So um, it's exciting, but not always fun, if you know what I mean. It's not, when Jesus said, follow me, he didn't say, take up your cushion and follow me. He said, take up your cross and follow me. So it's challenging at times. And I don't know whether you heard about the Serbian wrestler in the Olympics. He crossed himself and they banned him from sport for five months. So you can see that we're we're coming under more pressure, more and more pressure, especially the Orthodox especially the Orthodox. I think I've told you once before that um, the uh, Prime Minister of, of Sweden, not the present one, the previous one, said, the last obstacle in the way of the liberal agenda is the Orthodox Church. So what's this war against Russia all about? Orthodoxy, probably. Why are they killing so many young men in... Um, Ukraine, why are they allowing it to go on and on and on? They're all Orthodox young men. You see what's going on? Why did they uh, banish him for five months? They don't want to see that sign of the cross. So, scary times. It's not on the contract. (laughs) But these are the times we're living in. So what are we going to do? Give up? Stop crossing ourselves? No. I love the response of the Serbian wrestler. God has given me anything. I'm not going to stop crossing myself. You know, so he's not going to give up his faith. And we shouldn't either. So how do we, how do, we do this? And that takes me across to the uh, epistle today. And um, Father Nicholas had already started preparing the epistle, the epistle so he, he shared with me some of his thoughts. He said, have a look at that first sentence, Father Jeff. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch, it says. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave. Be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. These were the words, the last 
sort of part of uh, St. Paul's uh, first letter to the church at Corinth, telling them to watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong, let all that you do be in love. So, um, <clears throat> here we go. Be strong. I just want to look at be, be brave. Origen said, be courageous. St. Paul says this as if speaking to soldiers. Free charges. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We need to be wearing our armour all the time, saying our prayers, signing, signing ourselves with the cross. Be strong. Um, Joshua. God said to Joshua, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That was the only thing that Jesus said to the disciples. I will be with you to, to the end. And he was. And he's with us. And we can be brave. Um, Psalm 27, wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. 2 Corinthians 2.10, for the sake of Christ then, St. Paul says, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. But the last phrase in that sentence is, let all this be done in love. And that is very, very important. So how can we get the courage to do this, really? It's, a, it's easy enough to say, be strong, be courageous, but how can we do it? This is where we need to stay close to God. I was reading my um, prayers for uh, preparation for communion, and uh, I, I was thinking about this sermon, and I reflected on something which was in the um, seventh prayer before communion, where it talks about, uh, just like St. Peter fell at the, th the feet of Jesus, therefore I fall at your feet, And fervently cry to you, as you received the prodigal and the harlot, who drew near to you, so also have compassion and receive me, a profligate and a prodigal, as I now approach you with a contrite heart. I know, O Saviour, that no other has sinned against you as I have, nor has any done the deeds that I have committed. But this I also know, that neither the greatness of my offences, nor the multitude of my sins surpasses the great patience of, a, of my God and his immense love for man. Wow. Isn't that amazing? These things make me bold, my Christ. These things give me wings. I take courage from the wealth of your goodness towards us. So where do we find courage? In the wealth of God's goodness towards us. Do you know how good God is? Just think about it, what he's done for us. He's come into this world. He lived among us. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. He's taught us how to live. And it's a, it's a wealth of goodness that he has for us. Incredible. Some people are afraid of God. Why are they afraid of God? Because they've got something to hide from him. But if we are able to come to God, like St. Peter did, depart from me, I'm a sinner. It's all right, Paul, St. Peter, sorry. Um, it's all right, I'll forgive, you're forgiven. When we come to God and we fall at his feet, you're forgiven. This is part of the wealth of his goodness. He is a good God. We don't need to be afraid of him. And once we realize that, once we understand the love of God and his goodness towards us, then we get courage. Then we become bold. Then we can go out, not just to share, not to, just to experience the good news that we've experienced because he's forgiven us, but to share it with others. And that's what St. Peter and James and John went to do for the rest of their lives. When he said to them, from now on you won't be catching fish, you'll be catching men. The illustration there, sometimes I thought, oh gosh, when I went fishing, I used to pull the fish into the boat and then we kill them and then we eat them. I thought, eh, the, the illustration doesn't really work here, does it? But it does, because the, the Greek word here is not the, not the normal word for catching fish. It's catching someone alive. 
So taking prisoners alive, that kind of thing. So we take them, we rescue these people alive from the sea of the world, we bring them into the Christian boat, and we give them life. And then we help them to live and to share their faith with others. That's how it's meant to be. Do you know how good God is? Do you understand the wealth of God's goodness? Let that sort of sink into your soul. And you'll find that you'll have boldness and courage to follow him. And even like the Serbian wrestler, to sign yourself with a sign of the cross in front of other people. May God help us to have this boldness and uh, strength and also um, uh, courage to go out into the world and preach the gospel and share the good news of our Lord and God and Saviour Jesus Christ. Now to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be ascribed all might, majesty, dominion and praise now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen.